What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, your host of the Two Growls, One Roar podcast. And I'm back with your Carolina Panthers and New Orleans Saints preview. We have a big announcement, a very big announcement. If you've been following along the last few days, you've heard that Bryce Young suffered an injury on the Monday night football game. No one has been able to pinpoint when the injury happened. I think every press media outlet has asked every coach, every player that's come up to the podium, when did this injury occur? No one knows. No one's been able to confirm. Happened at some point, they said in the first half. So he did play through the injury. So this comes out. Yesterday, we found out that Bryce Young would not be at the walkthrough practice. So you kind of say, well, walk through. That's okay because it's just, you know, getting the install in today is where we wanted to see, is he going to be out there? Go out to practice. Bryce Young is not out there. Shortly after practice, the Panthers post and make a statement that Andy Dalton is likely going to be your starter this week. We saw it coming in a way when Andy was the one who took the, the presser today for the quarterbacks, which was, you know, before the practice. It made sense. But here we are, and we're going to have part of the fan base right now that is very excited that Andy Dalton's in, and we're going to have part of the fan base that is disappointed that Bryce Young's not out there. There's going to be part of it that's trying to say that the coaching staff is hiding Bryce Young, that the reason they're doing this, that they're shielding him with this quote-unquote ankle injury, I I don't buy it. I mean – Maybe to an extent, and I think when you have someone like Andy Dalton here to lead the team, and that's the whole reason he was brought in. Andy Dalton was brought in for these situations. I talked about it all offseason. Andy Dalton was here before we made our selection at quarterback. But one thing, no matter what happens on Sunday, there's a decent chance, even though the ESPN matchup predictor is not giving us a chance, there is a decent chance that we could win this football game. We play well against the Seahawks. The Seahawks defense has not looked good this year. So there is an opportunity for us to score some points and turn this thing around. But what we do not want to see and or happen is, well, let's say we want this to happen. We want Andy Dalton to go out there and throw three or four touchdowns and help us win the game. But I'm telling you, there's part of the fan base that if that happens, they are going to lose their mind. Because they're going to tell us that Andy Dalton should be out there and should be the starter. And I'm not saying he shouldn't. Like, if you go back and redo this, there's, I mean, there's only a few ways you you can look at it. If you play the Green Bay Packers route and you start Andy Dalton, let Bryce Young sit, you know, the way that we've seen other teams do that, there is an opportunity for him to learn, to, to develop. But This coaching staff and David Tepper went all in on Bryce Young. They traded away all this draft capital, Scott Fitterer. So the opportunity is here in the present. They felt like they had to get him on the field immediately. Will this change? Will this change the trajectory of his development? It could. But when we heard Andy Dalton talk about it today, number one, Andy Dalton's excited to be here. And I said this through the offseason that he could be a starter for five or six other teams. And I, I fully believe that like hand on the Bible, he could start for a few other teams in this league. He chose to come here to be this mentor role also with the potential to, for something like this to happen, but he knows, and even he said it, he's not here to win the job. He's not here to fight and, and take over or cause a quarterback controversy. He's here to win games for the team and do what's best for the team. He knows this is Bryce Young's team. And when Bryce Young is healthy and available, he's going to be out there. And I can't remember who asked in the presser today, but there was a question, you know, is this good for Bryce to to be able to sit out? And Andy's like, no, I mean, not really. Like, I guess in a way you you may think it is from the outside, but the, the best learning opportunity for the quarterback for Bryce Young is to be out there on the field playing. That's the only way you're going to learn and grow and develop. So I say all that as we head into this week and as we talk about the preview, 
keep that in the back of your mind. And I mean, here's the other thing. I talked about injuries coming into the season. We saw in a few plays where Bryce got got sacked. Really just, it, it, you know, if it was a Josh Allen or a bigger quarterback, you you feel like they could escape the tackle. But he got he easily got taken down, almost kind of like thrown around. His durability was a question just with the size of who he is. But I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to sweat what's happened to this point. It's something where you truly have to do take this. You have to take this week by week. It is a little, a little disappointing in general because it feels like the pressure's off. The pressure's off of Bryce Young. The pressure is off the team at this point. Week one, you come out. It's your it's your NFL debut. So there's a lot of pressure there, and you're on the road. Then you come back and your home debut is on Monday night football. Again, a lot of pressure, big environment. And now you, you turn around and you're traveling all the way across the country, 2000 miles away. Nobody is expecting you to win. And you're going up against the Seattle Seahawks defense that's averaging almost 30 points a game, like giving up 30 points per game. And it's like a prime opportunity or felt like a prime opportunity with the defense that we have for us to be competitive and in this game. And you hate that you don't get to see that. What I do hope that we see, and I think the offense will be adjusted a little bit, you know, with the preferences that Andy Dalton has at the quarterback position. When I got to see him in training camp, he he did look like the veteran, a solid quarterback. You know, if you're being honest, he's bigger. I mean, he's he's clearly bigger than Bryce Young back there. So I think, you know, we may see a little bit, a few few wrinkles in the offense that we have. But the foundation of what we do is still going to be dependent or the success of what we get out of this week is going to be dependent on the wide receiver room, their ability to get separation. You know, earlier this week on online, I saw someone share a chart of Bryce's ability to throw to open receivers through tight windows. And it all correlated to essentially our wide receivers are getting no separation at all, which is like the worst in the league. It's it's really hard to navigate that as a quarterback, but at the same time, as the quarterback, when you have three to four seconds to throw, that's a lot of time. And there's a lot of situations if you go and look at the film, you can go back and see. Yeah, the window might it might not be perfect, but the window's there, and the window's there for him to make a throw, to him to make a decision to make a throw. And it's almost like he's just too scared to to let it go. I don't know why, because he's a good quarterback. It's like he's, I don't know if he's not seeing it all the way, if he's focused on the one read, if things are happening too fast. You you have to wonder. And I'm not saying they are. And don't get it wrong. I said this before. I'm not saying he's a bust. I think he is the long term solution that's going to develop. But as I said last, you know, on the, the reaction episode, things are just going to be a little bit differently. And this is, you know, the state of the team. Frank Wright's teams in general have always started slow. It's something we talked about. He's never won a season opener. Here we are, 0-2, heading into, you know, at this point, when you start saying must win, your assumption is the team's going to make the playoffs. This team today on paper, where we are, is not a playoff caliber team. And that's just being honest. That's being honest. You know, I had high expectations. They've even said that in the, in the pressers, the coaches, They expect more, which is good. I mean, you do want to expect more. You do want to win. Nobody wants to sign up to lose every day. But I'm not going to call this a must-win game. I think it's a learning development opportunity for what we have out there, especially when you start talking about Shaq Thompson with his injury. So Shaq Thompson, broken fibula, he's out, out for the season. We'll take a look at the injury report in a second. And I thought we were very injured, (laughs) like our our. Our team was banged up. The Seattle Seahawks team is just torn apart. And I, I, let's go ahead. Let's take a look. So we know Bryce Young is battling the ankle injury. He did not practice today or yesterday. Brian Burns is also battling an ankle injury. He had a limited participation today and yesterday. Same for Justin Houston, but his is a calf injury. Miles Sanders, pectoral, had a limited practice. Today and yesterday, Chandler Wooten had a limited practice or limited participation Wednesday, full participant today. Mari Barno, and I should say Wooten was battling a knee. Barno with his thigh had a full participation um, Wednesday and Thursday. 
you go down and look, I mean, it feels like half the roster of for Seattle is on the injury report. Kobe Bryant, cornerback, toe injury. He did not practice Wednesday. We don't have the Thursday results yet. Charles Cross, their offensive tackle, toe did not practice. Derek Hall, battling a shoulder, was a full participant. And then DK Metcalf, rib injury, did not practice. Jaron Reed, defensive end, groin, did not practice. Will Dissey, tight end, shoulder, did not practice. Julian Well of safety, hamstring, did not practice. Tariq Woolen, cornerback, chest, did not practice. Devin Bush, linebacker, uh, shoulder, did not practice. Boy Mafe, linebacker, knee, did not practice. And then your limited participants, Evan Brown, center, Phil Haynes, guard, Noah Font, tight end, ribs, was a full participant. And then Jamal Adams, safety, knee. Good gosh. Like, I thought we were banged up. I know a few of our guys are on IR, so a little bit different. But anyways, like, good goodness gracious. I think a lot of the Seattle team will be ready. And the the thing that's being discussed is like playing in Seattle is a tough environment. We've seen a lot of issues over these past two weeks in Atlanta and at home with us getting the play calls in. And I go back to saying that's a collaboration issue that we have this collaborative approach. And it was a funny, it wasn't funny, but there was a video posted like comparing, I don't know if it was Sean McVay next to Frank Wright. But, and I think it was, but it was basically showing like Frank Wright staring down at the play sheet to call the plays, like staring at it versus Sean McVay, who's using the play sheet to cover his mouth to call the plays. And it's just this Sean McVay's already got the plays in his mind or he knows what's going to be called or, you know, where they are versus like Reich having to sit here and like look at it. So if you ask, like, what am I going to be watching? That's one of the things. Is this so? My question is: Is this like a Bryce Young thing, or Bryce is having difficulty getting the play in, regurgitating it? We've had to waste a few timeouts because of that, or is it a coaching staff thing? And we'll see Andy Dalton having the same issues. But you go in with a noisy environment, having that veteran quarterback Andy Dalton being able to go in some silent snap counts and or get the plays in is a good opportunity. Um, and, and having his experience there definitely makes a difference. So when we talk about the roster, we also, you know, with Shaq Thompson going on IR, made a few other acquisitions this week. We released safety Eric Rowe from the practice squad. With Shaq going on IR, we signed Deion Jones to the active roster from the practice squad. I kind of predicted that that would be it. He was brought in in the preseason training camp, got cut, got back on the practice squad, and then now he's getting getting elevated. We've released cornerback Mark Milton, signed quarterback Jake Lutton. So if you're wondering like, hey, what are we going to do with the quarterback position? Well, we have Jake Lutton and, you know, you feel comfortable with him if he has to be the backup on on Sunday because he's been here all of training camp. Andy talked about that today. He's big. I think he's like 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. He looked good in some of the preseason. I did wonder with Matt Corral being, you know, released if we would pick him up sounds like he's his time here's just done and then we signed cornerback Robert Rochelle to the practice squad so we continue to stay busy you don't see really anything being done at the wide receiver position will something be done I teased out you know do you think that we'll actually make a trade here at the trade deadline we're we're just out of draft capital so it, you're not you know you're talking about trading a player We looked at, you know, Burns potentially getting moved last year. Is he available? I don't think so. Jeremy Chin, because if you look at the defense that we're in, he only played like 35% of the snaps this past week. And Jeremy Chin has a lot of versatility. It's just in the scheme and fit that we have. He's, he's, you know, the nickel safety. And he's in there a lot of, you know, passing situations. So we haven't seen a lot of him. And I say that, is he available? I don't know. So, I do think Scott Fitters on the hot seat because if you look around, you realize we don't have the capital coming up over this year. You look at what we're going to have to spend on Burns if we do spend it. And then you try to think like, how am I going to get Bryce Young, a true number one wide receiver on this team? I don't know. So I think he's just going to continue to stay active as we go through this. 
kind of make the rounds. Now, one thing that was brought up, because we did get to hear from Chris Tabor, uh, Tariq Cohen, it's it's one of those like week-to-week discussions on if he's ever going to get moved up, primarily for the return game. And if you think about where we are, that would likely mean somebody could be Raheem Blackshear gets bumped off the roster. So Raheem Blackshear did not suit up. He was a healthy scratch last week. From hearing Tabor talk, that had to do with the fact that we had to bring up or we did bring up an extra linebacker. So you get into this numbers or you get into a numbers game because you can only, you know, dress so many players. So you're going to have some healthy scratches. And in this case, you have LaVisca and or Amir Smith Marset who can return. And you just have to play that game as a coach that would you rather have an additional returner who's Raheem in Raheem's case, he's primarily a return guy. Yeah, he's he's a good running back, but we're not seeing him that much. So you take LaVisca knowing that half the kicks go out of the end zone, and that's that's the way you position it. When we look at what we have this week, I mean, I won't go through. Well, I guess I will. Um, because there was an addition that happened, and I, you know, with my frustration of the game, kind of just glazed over it. So Iki Aquanu and Chandler Zavala are now the left side of your line. Chandler Zavala's primary position in college was left guard, so it made sense to to have him move over, even though he looked good at right. This is his natural fit. He did play with Icky in college at NC State together, but they played like five games. I see a lot of people talking about like that chemistry that they are going to have. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, tone it down. They played five games. So you don't say that this is like the new Batman and Robin on that side. Bradley Bozeman still there. Uh, you've got Cade Mays at right guard. We saw Throckmorton getting some reps. I would like to see Nash Jensen getting in there this week because I have not been impressed by Cade Mays. I continue not to be impressed by him. And then Taylor Moten is your your right tackle. We did not see a lot out of the tight ends last week. Ian Thomas, Hayden Hurst, Tommy Trimble's almost been non-existent, you know, in in the first two games. If we hope to have any shot at beating the Seattle Seahawks, Hayden Hurst has to get involved and he has to get involved early. Adam Thielen was your leading receiver last week. I mean, he kind of came alive a little bit. There were some plays that he could have made that he didn't, but he did make the plays that, you know, he was able to do. And Jonathan Mingo, it, quite frankly, has not been impressive. You know, there was a lot of hype with him. He did look good in the preseason as well. And then we get into the real, you know, live games. I can't remember the specific play, but it was like a third and 10 or 11. Bryce puts it right on him where he could catch and run and easily get the first down. I think he might have been behind the line or beyond it already. And he drops it. And like, you can only have so many opportunities. I do think he'll learn. But you you take that and you talk talk about Terrace Marshall. I mean, I I can't sit here and, and, and tell you that this is a good wide receiver group. It's just not. And I was kind of, I'll take credit for for hyping them up in the preseason that I felt good about this. We, we just don't have a number one. And when you have a number one or at least a number two that can get you down and open, like it, as much as, you know, Robbie chosen Anderson, like as much as he was a problem for us, he did have that vertical over the top threat, having that and being able to get, you know, guys available, it, it makes a big difference. And one thing, I know Bryce isn't playing this week, but someone tweeted out that someone who covers the NFC South, that Bryce Young's averaging 4.2 yards per pass, which he is, and it's not good. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with the design because yards per pass, if you if you calculate that, you could throw the ball five yards. And then if the receiver runs for 70 yards, you're going to get credit for a 75-yard completion. And what we're seeing, because I compared it, because guess what? Joe Burrow is also averaging 4.2 yards per a pass. And they're 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 at the bottom of the league, both of them, which is like on on pace for like one of the worst ever to to start the season. And it is like there you can't deny that. But I'm not gonna overreact right now because you you flip this and you look at Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's throwing for 200 yards a game. And he's averaging about 7.9 yards per pass because he has the weapons, the McCaffrey, the Ayuk, uh, the Debo, all the guys that catch the ball. And then they're able to make the plays and get, you know, gain yardage and make it look a little bit better. So I'm not going to overreact 
to that. I think it's just one of those things where we're like, oh yeah, this, this, that's what a, a good wide receiving core looks like. And this is what a terrible one looks like. And what do you do? You're out of draft capital, like I said. So there's only so much that can actually happen. Let's talk about the game as we go in. In a, in, in a lot of things or on the offensive side of the ball, we're clearly deficient. You know, Seattle's coming in averaging 25 points a game. We're averaging 13 and a half. The average scoring margin as far as like the difference is eight and a half. So we're losing by almost a touchdown per game so far. I know it's two games in and Seattle's losing by about five and a half. So they just had the, the overtime game. Yards per game, 260 yards for us, 286 for Seattle. They're averaging about 4.1 yards per play, or we are averaging 4.1 per play. They're averaging 5.1. Time of possession, we have the ball almost 51% of the game. So do you have an upper hand there? Seattle is only averaging about 41%. Defensive side of the ball is where we – like. That's our our only hope is being able to shut down this this team because Seattle is giving up 30 points per game. We're averaging 22 right now. Yards per game, we're only giving up 281 yards per game. Like you really can't ask for a much better defense. They are giving up 422 yards, 5.9 yards per play. So when I talk about this opportunity for Bryce, which is not going to be Andy. Like this is the opportunity that I'm talking about. Takeaways, they're averaging one and a half. So they are, you know, turning the ball over, which is what you want to see. And then from a um, offensive efficiency standpoint, or if we kind of look at the breakdown from a passing perspective, we're both both passing the ball about the same, about 60% of the time, running at 40%. We're averaging about 64 plays per game. They're averaging 56. I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, coming into this. And it's just been a bad, bad two weeks. And when you look at the the prediction, I mean, I think they opened, Seattle opened as a five and a half point favorite. They're now a six point favorite. I feel like this is the opportunity for the Panthers to, to win. And I told you that ESPN matchup predictor says 72% chance for Seattle. But these are the games, the, the moments, and we we won last year uh, against Seattle and it kind of turned the season. That was just a different situation. But these are the games, if you are going to take a step and be competitive, you have to win. Because if you look ahead, and again, you can't you can't look ahead, or at least I guess the team can't look ahead, but I can. You think about what's coming up with Minnesota, which is winnable, but Minnesota's got a great offense. The Detroit Lions, who are Detroit Lions who are a good football team as well. And then the Miami Dolphins, then we have our bye week. So it's it's like if you you gotta win one because I can tell you I've played on some losing football teams and you'll lose one game, you lose two games, you lose three, you just keep going and going and going. Things stack up and whether you you can come out and say that you know you feel confident in what you have I don't know I mean it's uh it's it's hard to say so I think winning this is crucial and it's you know I'm gonna give you my prediction in a second I think the other thing that's kind of being overlooked this this draft class with DJ Johnson not getting any playing time with Jamie Robinson not really getting any playing time I mean it's it's a tough spot right now for Fitter, and I, I kind of keep going back to that, but it, it really is. I don't know what the solution is going to be. I know he's probably hoping, wishing, praying that you know the team figures it out so that he does get to uh, hang around here a little bit more. So I don't know. But all right, y'all, closing this week's episode out, we have, sorry, Carolina Panthers at Seattle Seahawks. Sunday kickoff, 4.05 p.m. on CBS. And I'm one and one as, as far as my predictions this year. I predicted us winning the first game, losing last game. So I'm one and one. I'm looking to get to two and one. These are the only games I pick. I do think I am going, not I do think, I'm going to take the Panthers this week. So hopefully you you know the Panthers fans that are, are riding me. 
can ease up a little bit. It does feel like a good opportunity. No one's expecting it, not even Seattle. You have Andy Dalton taking the helm. I do think it could be a little bit rusty starting off. But I think we end up winning this game. And I was trying to think, like, last week, I, I don't know that we can get to, to 30 points. Like, if we get to 20 in the 20 range, so I think 24 to 17, we win by a touchdown. No, 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 let's do 24 to 20. Carolina Panthers win. Now, could end up being a high-scoring game, but I'm going to kind of take it on the lower side right now. And so, yeah, that's all I got, y'all. That's my final prediction. I will see you all later.